Moses who instructs all men with his celestial writings, he the master of the Hebrews, has instructed us in teaching the law which constitutes a very treasure house of revelations, wherein is revealed the tale of the garden, described by things visible, but glorious for what lies hidden. Spoken of in few words, yet wondrous with its many plants. Praise to your righteousness, which exalts those who prove victorious. I took my stand halfway between awe and love, a yearning for paradise invited me to explore it. But awe at its majesty restrained me from my search. With wisdom, however, I reconciled the two. I revered what lay hidden and meditated on what was revealed. The aim of my search was to gain profit. The aim of my silence was to find succor. Joyfully did I embark on the tale of paradise, a tale that is short to read but rich to explore. My tongue read the story's outward narrative, while my intellect took wing and soared upward in awe as it perceived the splendor of paradise, not indeed as it really is, but in so far as humanity is granted to comprehend it. With the eye of my mind I gazed upon paradise, the summit of every mountain is lower than its summit. The crest of the flood reached only its foothills, these it kissed with reverence before turning back to rise above and subdue the peak of every hill and mountain. The foothills of paradise it kisses, while every summit it buffets. Not that the ascent to paradise is arduous because of its height, for those who inherit it experience no toil there. With its beauty it joyfully urges on those who ascend, amidst glorious rays it lies resplendent, all fragrant with its scents, magnificent clouds fashion the abodes of those who are worthy of it. From their abodes the children of light descend, they rejoice in the midst of the world where they had been persecuted, they dance on the sea's surface and do not sink, for Simon although a rock did not sink. Blessed is he who has seen, together with them his beloved ones, below in their bands of disciples, and on high in their bridal chambers. The clouds of their chariots fly through the air. Each of them has become the leader of those he has taught. His chariot corresponds to his labors. His glory corresponds to his followers. Blessed the person who has seen as they fly, the prophets with their bands, the apostles with their multitudes. For whoever has both acted and taught is great in the kingdom. But because the sight of paradise is far removed, and the eye's range cannot attain to it, I have described it over simply, making bold a little. Resembling that halo which surrounds the moon, we should look upon paradise as being circular too, having both sea and dry land encompassed within it. And because my tongue overflows as one who has sucked the sweetness of paradise, I will portray it in diverse forms. Moses made a crown for that resplendent altar, with a wreath entirely of gold did he crown the altar in its beauty. Thus gloriously entwined is the wreath of paradise that encircles the whole creation. When Adam sinned, God cast him forth from paradise, but in his grace he granted him the low ground beyond it, settling him in the valley below the foothills of paradise. But when mankind even there continued to sin, they were blotted out, and because they were unworthy to be neighbors of paradise, God commanded the ark to cast them out on Mount Cardu. There the families of the two brothers had separated. Cain went off by himself and lived in the land of Nod, a place lower still than that of Sheth and Enosh. But those who lived on higher ground who were called the children of God, left their own region and came down to take wives from the daughters of Cain down below. The children of light dwell on the heights of paradise, and beyond the abyss they espy the rich man. He too, as he raises his eyes, beholds Lazarus, and calls out to Abraham to have pity on him. But Abraham, that man so full of pity, who even had pity on Sodom, has no pity yonder, for him who showed no pity. The abyss severs any love which might act as a mediary, thus preventing the love of the just from being bound to the wicked, so that the good should not be tortured by the sight in Gehenna of their children or brothers or family. A mother, who had denied Christ, imploring mercy from her son or her maid or her daughter, who all had suffered affliction for the sake of Christ's teaching. There the persecuted laugh at their persecutors, the afflicted at those who had caused them affliction, the slain at those who had put them to death, 
the prophets at those who had stoned them, the apostles at those who had crucified them. The children of light reside in their lofty abode, and as they gaze on the wicked and count their evil actions, they are amazed to what extent these people have cut off all hope by committing such iniquity. Woe to him who tries to hide his shameful deeds in the dark, who does wrong and then tries to deceive those who have seen. Having gone in and committed some wrong, he lies so as to deceive those who have heard. May the wings of your grace protect me, for there the accusing finger points out and daily proclaims the sinner's shame and hidden dealings. What I have told must suffice my boldness, but if there is anyone who dares to go on and say, as for the dull-witted and simple people who have done wrong out of ignorance, once they have been punished and paid their debt, he who is good allows them to dwell in some remote corner of paradise, where they can graze on that blessed food of the crumbs. This place despised and spurned by the denizens of paradise, those who burn in Gehenna hungrily desire, their torment doubles at the sight of its fountains, they quiver violently as they stand on the opposite side. The rich man too begs for succor, but there is no one to wet his tongue, for fire is within them while the water is opposite them.